Okay, let's turn to the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. Let's read these verses out loud together. Ready, begin. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. Uh, Today, once again, um, I'm answering a question that some of the youth uh, kids had uh, at the retreat that we couldn't get to during our panel discussion, okay? Uh, At our winter retreat, we had a panel discussion uh, with the teachers up in front, and the uh, students had a lot of questions about Christianity, about the Christian life, about the world, about different issues, topics, and we got through many of them, but there were some things that we just didn't have enough time uh, to get to, and so this is one of them. The question is, what if uh, I'm a very, very nice person, really moral, really uh, uh, helpful and, and, and nice to other people? And what if I have friends like that? Does it mean that just because they don't believe in Jesus, we're all going to hell? It's a fairly common question, a question that when we talk to our friends who aren't Christians or when we, um, you know, just kind of think about, wait, this person's such a nice person. Are they going to go to hell, right? Um, It doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem fair. If God is good, the, the common question, if God is good, why does he send people to hell? If God is, 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 loves us, if God loves his creation, why did he even create hell? Why, did he, why does he send people to hell? It's a fairly common question, and I wanted to talk about that through what the Bible says about our salvation, about heaven and hell. Okay, if you look at today's verses, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. And then the first part of the next verse says not by works. If you've been a Christian for any period of time, by now you know that our salvation is not because of what we do. We already know this, right? It's not because we behave in certain ways that God blesses us. It's not because we behave in certain ways that he saves us, okay? God is our father. God is good, okay? And he loves us. And so before we did anything good, before we did anything, God already saved us. All it took was faith in him. All it took was believing in God's word. But, but if we've been Christians for any, uh, you know, any number of years or whatever, any period of time, we know this already, that our salvation is not a deserved reward for our work, but it is the gift of God. But here's the thing. In this world that we live in, we have to work for everything. That's just the world we live in. No matter what you have, no matter what you get, everything that we have, we had to work for it. We had to deserve it. Even with our parents, we make deals, right? Our parents say, I'll let you da-da-da-da-da if you no 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 right? There's a deal. There's something we have to work for things. We have to deserve things. We have to qualify for things. And that's so embedded in our minds and our hearts and just our livelihood that we we take that and we transfer it over to our relationship with God. In all of our relationships, it's a give and take. It is. We are friends with this person and they are friends with me because we have something to offer each other. We're so used to that. 
that we kind of see our relationship with God in the same way. Okay, God is God. God is this great big God, right? He created us and he doesn't want us to commit sin and he wants us to obey him and he wants all of these things and to follow all these rules. And therefore, if I do them really, really well, then God, maybe he'll save me. So our life many times is just filled with stress. You know, we have enough stress with school, with work, with relationships, with family, right? With the weather. We have so much stress. And then we have the added stress of, am I good enough for God? Am I good enough to be called a Christian? Am I good enough to earn salvation? And it really weighs on us. I mean, we say in our minds, we say, well, you know, I know I don't work for it. I know God loves me no matter what. I know that God saved me, not because of the things that I did, but because of his grace. It's a free gift from God. I know it, but I can't help but to live my life in a way to try to deserve God's love. Try to deserve, because I have to do that for everybody else. Do you think my wife loves me unconditionally? No. Heck no. It's because of, you know, what I do, what I what, what can get from each other. It's because I, you know, vacuum the house. If I didn't care about her, if I didn't think about her, if I didn't, uh, you know, try to get to know her or develop a relationship with her, she wouldn't love me. And we think that's the same with God. I have to do something in order to deserve God's love because that's the way that this world works. But that's not true. It's not. But then what about all those verses in the Bible that say obey God? Don't commit sin. You know, avoid these things and make sure you take care of the widows and the orphans and the poor, right? As we said last week, give to those who want to borrow from you, right? Don't expect to be paid back. If somebody takes this, give them these other things as well. I mean, what about all that stuff? Isn't that part of being a Christian? Let's look at verse 10 uh, in today's passage. Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says, for we are God's workmanship. I've mentioned this before. We're not just God's creation, like he created us. There you go. I'm going to make something, boom, 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 and I made it. But we are his workmanship. Workmanship refers to a masterpiece. Workmanship refers to something that you spend so much time on, so much effort on, something the results of which you care so much about. He didn't just create us, you know, out of dust, whatever, boom, made it. Oh, okay, that's nice. You're good. But he thought of it. He thought of us. He, co he considered us. How am I going to make people? How am I going to make you? God thought of each of us. And we are his workmanship. We are not an afterthought. After God created the universe, and look how massive and amazing the universe is. Look at the stars. And Jamie said last yesterday, I love being under the stars because I feel so small. And the star, it's just so vast, right? Look at all of that. Sorry, Jamie, I just came out. I just, I'm sorry. Uh, if you spend a lot of time with me, yeah, it, it just happens. Uh, all the stars, the entire universe, all of nature. You've gone, you know, if your parents are into nature stuff, right? You've gone with them. And they're like standing there looking at a tree going, oh, right? You're like, what's wrong with you, right? But, but we've seen that nature and all the greatness. God created all of that first. And then he created human beings last. Was it an afterthought? You know, I created all this, and I... I still have something's missing, you know, something's missing. I, I think I'll just create human beings. That's not what happened. And the reason we know this is because the Bible says that God created us in his image. He created us in his likeness. He saved the best for last, which many women will say, well, since females were the very, very last, uh, we must be the very, very best. I don't know. But God <laughs> 
created us with so much thought, so much concern. We are his workmanship. And then look what it says. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Listen very carefully. We do good works not because we want to deserve God's love and deserve God's favor and deserve salvation. We don't, we don't do good works because God's going to be upset or God's going to take away the salvation or God's going to. No, we do good works because we are God's workmanship and we were created to do good works. Listen, we don't do good works to deserve salvation. We do good works because of who we are. Do you understand this? Because that's who we are and that's what we were created to do. It's what we do. If you are a Christian, you are a child of God. God created in God's image his workmanship that he was so concerned about when he created and he created us to do good works. He didn't save us to do good works. That already happened. God already saved us because our relationship with him was broken because of sin. And we had zero desire to know God. We had zero desire to confess our sins and come to the Lord. But God in his grace and mercy and love called us by name and said, I want you. You are my child. And because of that grace, we were filled with faith. We confessed our sins and we became reconciled to God. Now what? God says, I created you for a reason. I created you for a purpose. This is what my children do. He created us. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. What are some practical applications for this? If you're doing homework and you don't know why you're doing it, it's so worthless, it's so pointless. How, when am I ever going to use derivatives in my life? Right? When am I ever going to, you know, it doesn't matter. It do, maybe you will. I don't know. I'm not a math person. Maybe someday you will. But, you know, if you're, if you're doing the work without knowing why, without understanding the reason, and you're just doing the work, it's hard, it's tough, it's stressful. And when you don't get it done, you feel inadequate. If you don't understand it, you feel stupid. Same thing with this Christian life, you guys. If we're doing the work, serving at church, being generous to other people, being patient, being kind to other people, but we don't know why we're doing it. We're doing it so that we can get something out of it, right? We study hard to try to get that A. We work hard to try to earn that paycheck and earn that promotion. When we're doing that, that's just, it's, it, it's got to be forced out of us. But if we know why we're doing what we're doing, and if we know that the reason why we're doing it is because that's who I am, as I said yesterday, I had a tough, tough day from early in the morning. And, you know, it was tough mentally, physically, and, and emotionally, and physically. It was really tough yesterday. But I'm, as I'm doing these things, as I'm, you know, watching Jamie run circles literally around me, you know, and, and I'm just walking and walking and breathing, and my heart's about to explode, and I'm walking, you know, I could be saying to myself, what in the world am I doing? Do I have to do this? What's going on? But while I'm doing that, while I'm having my meetings, while I'm, I'm thinking, who am I? What am I? You know, as Jamie's running, I, I'm so, sorry, but we, we, we exercised yesterday. As she's running in front of me, I'm looking at her and I'm thinking I'm her pastor. And she's my student. This is what I do. Hey, Pastor, the guys are still playing basketball. You want to go? 
do I want to go and play basketball with the guys after having walked and kind of jogged a little bit, you know, almost four miles? Do I want to go to a basketball court and play basketball with these guys? Oh, I don't know. Let me call my wife. Hey, wife, what are you doing? Oh, we're going to do da 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 Oh, dang it. They don't need me. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could go play basketball, right? And then we went into the basketball court, and I'm like, dying. All right, come on, guys, let's go. I'm going to shoot. You know, we were sitting on the bench, and like, I'm like, Jamie, let's go. She goes, I'm now. I'm like, dang. <laughs> like, <laughs> we came here. Because, and so then, and then I play basketball. And, and while I'm doing it, my heart's about to explode, and I'm about to die. I'm going, this is what I do. As a Christian, this is the role God gave me as these kids' pastor. There are a lot of things you guys do that's tough, right? It's really difficult. You know, uh, and I know some of your parents say this too, like studying, that's your job. That's what God wants you to do. You know, that's your role right now. and That's your job, so you got to do You know, they're not completely wrong. For those of us in the workforce, you know, I hope you're not working just to make money. Because that's the lamest waste of life if you're working just to make money. If the only thing you're getting out of work is money. God placed you there. You're a representative of Christ. You're an ambassador of God. In that workplace, in that family, in that school, in that church, you are representing God. We talked about this in our Friday night Bible study. The world will say the only reason you go to work is to make money so that with that money you can enjoy your life, right? And there seems to be logic in that. Right? So don't invest too much in your work. Don't invest too much. You know, that's not your life. You're, you're only getting money from your work. And then you get to enjoy what you want to do because you have the money to do it. And that seems fairly logical. But you're telling me that you're spending 8, 9, 10 hours of your life in a place where you have zero influence as a child of God? Does that make sense? Do we have Christian hours? Sunday mornings, those are my Christian hours. That's what I'm going to encourage people. That's what I'm going to challenge people. That's what I'm going to, no. We do the work. We study. We work. We make money. We, we do all these things. We develop relationships. All the, We're patient. We're kind. We're gentle. All of these things, not to deserve salvation, but because that's what God created us to do. That's who I am. That's what I'm made for. And guys, that's what you're made of. To do things to try to, to deserve God's favor, to deserve God's love, to, do, to deserve salvation, that's hard. That's too much stress. That's too much pressure. And that's not the reason why God created us. That's not how we have salvation. It's not. So let's start to think differently. Now, some people take this to the, the utter extreme and say, oh, yeah, right. Salvation is not by works at all. So we don't have to be concerned about good deeds. We don't have to be concerned about helping the poor or helping those who are lonely. Or, or we don't have to be outcasts. And we don't have to be there for them because, hey, salvation is not by works. It's all by God's grace. So we don't have to do any work whatsoever for some of you want to look it up it's antinomianism okay they don't we don't have to do anything our deeds don't matter at all that's so wrong remember what it says in the book of james right faith without deeds is what dead dead you guys relationships are always two ways right in any relationship, any good, healthy relationship, you'll have to agree that, yes, it goes both ways. Now, let me ask you, what is your relationship with God like? Does it go both ways? Or is it just one way? God forgives me of my sin. God blesses me. God saves me. God understands me. God is patient with me. God is merciful to me. God provides all of my needs. What's my part of that relationship?
We are God's workmanship created to do good works in Christ. The works that God prepared for us to do. It's, that's our part of the relationship. Don't think of this as like a, a rule that we have to follow or our, our, uh, you know, some kind of like standard that we have to reach. It's just a, a result of who we are. If I'm not providing for my kids, if I'm not listening to their problems, if I'm not, then I cannot call myself their, myself their dad, right? If I'm not concerned about your spiritual well-being, if I'm not, and I know I'm not perfect, there's so many things I lack, but if I'm not concerned about your growth as Christians, your, your, your well-being as a person, if I'm not concerned about that, and if I'm not even trying to find out then I'm not, I can't call myself a pastor. Not because there's some kind of standard or there's some kind of rule or there's some kind of, you know what my job description is here at this church? You know what it says on my contract? Like the requirements for me? You know what it is? Nothing. There was no contract. There's zero requirements. Technically, I can just come to church on Sunday and preach and then go home. But how could I call myself a pastor? In any relationship, it has to go both ways. And in our relationship with God, don't be so passive, guys. Not that we're trying to earn God's salvation. But hey, God, this is who I am. That's why I do what I do. Because I am your child. Because I have the name of Christ in my description. I am a Christian. We're all saved by God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now what? Let's be a blessing to one another. Let's be an encouragement to one another. Let's be actual help to one another. As we serve each other, listen to each other, spend time with one another. And not just here at this church, one another, but outside as well, in your families, in your schools, in your workplaces. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are God's workmanship, created to do the works that God already planned for us to do. This isn't extra burden or extra pressure. This is the life that we live. And I hope that it becomes as natural and consistent as breathing. By the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, this is what we look forward to in our life. And you're already living it. You're already living it. I know you don't think, you know, I'm not perfect. I don't do anything. Nobody benefits from me. And I, Stop thinking like that. Oh, my gosh, that's so not true, right? It's so not true. God's already been using you in so many different ways. Continue to be a blessing toward one another. Let's pray.